Last year's Samsung Galaxy S5 didn't look, feel, or act like much of a match for Apple's top-selling iPhone. Well, you know what they say. What a difference a year makes. I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, and this is Samsung Galaxy S6 versus Apple iPhone 6, brought to you by Squarespace. Everybody's thinking it, so let's just say it. The Galaxy S6 is visually very similar to the iPhone 6. From the position of the power and volume keys, to the home buttons with integrated fingerprint scanners, to the arrangement of ports and speakers on the bottom edges, the similarity is undeniable. Hell, even the SIM card slots are in the same place. Does this mean that Samsung stole Apple's design? Well, no more than Apple stole HTC's antenna implementation, or OnePlus stole the idea of wooden smartphones from Motorola. The point is, idea appropriation is rampant in the smartphone world, and in this case, the results are positive for both phones. Whoever copied whom, all these ports and trays feature excellent precision machining, and the buttons offer terrific travel and feedback. When we flip around to the backside, the similarities quickly fade away. The Galaxy's rear cover is dominated by its protruding 16-megapixel optically stabilized camera module and accompanying biosensors, while Apple puts its non-stabilized 8-megapixel camera up in the corner. Also, the iPhone's ventral surface is wraparound aluminum, while the Galaxy's is Gorilla Glass 4. So while both are very smooth and comfortable to hold, the Samsung device is much more susceptible to fingerprints. Speaking of fingerprints, unlock these phones with a press of a thumb and you'll get a pleasant surprise. Gone is the cumbersome swiping of last year's sensors. The Galaxy's new reader is just as quick, accurate, and comfortable as the iPhone's. Ever since the first Galaxy S, Samsung has made it a point to keep ahead of Apple in screen size, and nothing's changed in that regard. The S6's display is almost a half inch larger on the diagonal and packs over two and a half million more pixels for a much sharper picture. Whether you'll notice this added sharpness depends on how much 4K video you're watching on your phone, and whether or not you're using the Galaxy S6 as part of a Gear VR headset. You will almost certainly notice the Galaxy's deeper blacks and more saturated colors, though, the result of Samsung using its own Super AMOLED technology versus the IPS LCD of the iPhone. And that same tech gulf makes for a more versatile display on the Samsung. It can get brighter in direct sunlight and dimmer in the dark. As we discussed last week, comparing the iPhone 6 and new HTC One, iOS and Android are pretty evenly matched from an ecosystem standpoint. If you can find an app in the App Store, odds are you'll be able to find it in Google Play, and vice versa. Responsiveness and app launch times are comparable here as well. While Android still has some annoying pauses in often accessed corners like the multitasking view, the differences are minor enough that most people probably won't notice. The important disparity is in the interface design. Commenters chafe when I say it, but it's true. Out of the box, iOS is the simpler interface. Its grid of icons and folders is simplicity itself. To get back to that grid, you press the phone's only front-mounted button. To mute the ringer, you flip the phone's only switch. Now, you can set Android to emulate Apple's simple look and feel if you want to, but that's not how the Galaxy S6 comes out of the box. Instead, its home screen is dominated by a big clock widget, flanked on the left by a newsreader, and on the right by, well, a ton of carrier bloat on the T-Mobile version. Apps are stored in a separate drawer, and in addition to the home key, you've got a dedicated back button and an app switching key. Oh, and good luck figuring out the ringer settings, now that Android Lollipop has screwed them up completely. But Android is also smarter in some ways. Its dedicated back key makes it easier to use with one hand, because iOS still insists on putting its back buttons on the upper left corner of most apps. Also, Android is the more customizable OS by far, especially with Samsung's latest improvements to its custom interface. If you don't like the look of your iPhone, you can change the wallpaper, and that's about it. You can't even decide where you want individual icons to be, because iOS will always stack them from upper left to lower right. Meanwhile, the Galaxy lets you change nearly every corner of the software. Layout, icons, widgets, shortcuts, all of it is fair game. If you want to load custom ringtones or images, you've got direct access to the file system. If that sounds too complicated, 
You can change the look and feel en masse with a click of a button, thanks to the new Theme Store. It's about philosophy. Android lets you make your phone your own. iOS seems to expect that you'll just be grateful to own an iPhone. Of course, a lot of people are grateful to own the iPhone, and iOS is a big part of that. It's not adaptable at all, but in my experience, it is more reliable. In just a week of using the Galaxy S6, I've had apps crash several times, popular ones like Instagram or Inbox. I've had background apps shut down even when I was actively using them to track exercise. And meanwhile, I can't remember the last time an app hard crashed on my iPhone 6. Considering how completely the Galaxy S6 outclasses the iPhone 6 in terms of specs, that's ludicrous. Simplicity isn't all bad. Optical performance is something the iPhone has been known for for years, but Samsung has rapidly been closing the gap. The results are maddening if you're trying to crown a winner, but encouraging if you want a solid camera, because each of these qualifies. You'll find that Apple sometimes delivers richer colors and better contrast in lower light, change up the scenery a little bit, and you start to see Samsung's warmer leanings. In this example, the iPhone delivers richer blues, while the Galaxy really amps up the reds. Turn on HDR and the Samsung, like nearly every other phone, beats the iPhone in terms of the amount of light it can extract from a scene. Also, Samsung's real-time HDR shows you what it's going to look like before you snap it, which is great. It's strange to see Apple, which pioneered the HDR effect on smartphones, now falling a bit behind in this regard. You don't even need the HDR mode to get a lot of detail from darker areas with the Galaxy, as this photo shows. Apple, once again, is content to allow more darkness if it means a more dramatic result. Zooming in, we also get to see Samsung's higher resolution sensor at work. The 16 megapixel Galaxy image is naturally sharper than the iPhone's 8 megapixel output, with less digital noise in the sky as well. Heading indoors, each phone gets its chance to shine but I tend to slightly favor Samsung's pictures. In some, the iPhone almost seems a bit washed out, while the Galaxy brings dramatic contrasts and more saturation. Samsung's warmer bias sometimes works in its favor. In real life, this red room is closer to this orange red than the pinkish hue Apple renders. Yet the Galaxy's tendency to highlight greens and yellows doesn't always make for a better shot, as can be seen in these close-ups. Here, the iPhone is probably closer to reality. And that only gets more true in extreme low light, where the Galaxy's color reproduction gets even further from the mark. You sacrifice a lot to shoot in 60 FPS on the Galaxy, but as you can see, the sacrifice is worth it. The Samsung video is smooth as can be, despite the rapid action, but you can say the same for the iPhone's 60 FPS footage as well. Despite its lack of optical stabilization, it's just as fluid. And as for selfies, well, Samsung's got the wider angle, but Apple's better at brightening faces. So let's just call it a draw. They're both excellent smartphone cameras, and the iPhone carries the added benefit of coming with iMovie right out of the box, so you can easily clip together a quick highlight reel to share with friends. But for my money, the Galaxy S6 camera is the better one overall. Double the resolution, optically stabilized and with a lightning-fast, dead-simple trigger action, plus bonuses like tracking autofocus, 4K video, and that live HDR preview, it's beyond merely capable. It's excellent. Time for the home stretch. What are these like in the day-to-day? -day? Strikingly similar in a lot of ways. With speakers this close in exterior design, it's no surprise that volume is comparable. The S6 might have a slightly flatter sound, but they're both plenty loud. Same goes for the earpieces, and the construction around them is so similar that, what do you know, each one still pulls out the occasional hair if you wear it a little long. So get a haircut, I guess? We're not ready to comment too much on endurance in this comparison. Our first S6 didn't do well against the 1M9, but it's since been swapped for a different unit and a software update has landed as well, so we're reserving judgment until our full review. I can tell you that charging is a very different experience on the S6. Rather than Apple's tiny lightning cable, you've got the far more common, but decidedly non-reversible, micro-USB. You've also got wireless charging on the S6, 
which ups the cool factor at least tenfold. And there's ultra power saving mode if things get really hairy. And lastly, there's the little stuff. The IR port on the Samsung lets you control your TV or home entertainment system. S Health is a lot like Apple Health, but on the Galaxy it's backed up by the dedicated heart rate monitor. And if for some reason you don't want to use any of these intense new features, Easy Mode is here to turn the Galaxy S6 into a $700 dumb phone. As usual, there's no one-size-fits-all recommendation here. They're both great phones for their respective platforms, and most people will decide which of these is the better fit based on ecosystem, iOS or Android. I called the iPhone 6 Excellence Exemplified in our full review, and I stand behind it. It's a great phone. But if you're on the cusp of buying your first smartphone, or you've been waiting for a good reason to make a jump from Apple to Android, there's almost no better device to do it with than the Galaxy S6. Some other phones are just as beautiful. Others have purer builds of Android. Still others come in more flavors. And many others are less expensive. But none of those have the particular blend of wins that the Galaxy S6 does. It is, once again, the iPhone's biggest threat. And this year, it's for good reasons. This comparison was brought to you by Squarespace and its new and simple version 7 drag and drop UI. Squarespace is the all-in-one solution that makes it fast and easy to create a beautiful website, blog, or online store for you and your ideas. Visit squarespace.com slash pocket now for your free trial and up to 10% off. You'll be getting a good deal and you'll be showing your support for pocket now while you're at it. Squarespace, start here, go anywhere. For more on the iPhone 6, check out our full review at pocketnow.com, which is also where you'll find our full Galaxy S6 review just as soon as we're finished writing it. In the meantime, check out our Galaxy S6 versus HTC One M9 video, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss it, and give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Till next time, this has been Michael Fisher with Pocket Now, Captain Two Phones on Twitter. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.